Harvest Summit Church. You glad to be here today? Hey, question, questions and answers part two series. Who has already submitted a question? All right, who has already gotten your question answered? Who is still waiting for your question? Please answer. Shake your hand really high. Okay, so I need to know who really wants their question answered. Good, good, good. Well, this has been an exciting series. If you have your worship guide, flip your worship guide open. I'm going to try to blaze through these. I'm really praying hard that I can make it the home of the 29-minute sermon today. But there, you have a lot of questions. So I'm going to do what I can uh, to get right into it. But let's, let's just uh, dive right into it. I'm going to give you my... Um, the, today, the overall theme, part two, is... We're talking about animals in heaven, uh, recre uh, reincarnation, not recreation, reincarnation, <laughs> gifts, free will, wisdom, and eternal salvation. Now, that's a lot to tackle in one Sunday, but we're going to do what we can. Answering questions that you actually asked. Okay, I'm not just making up questions and, and answering them. I'm answering the questions you actually asked. So write them down in the connection card today, in the comment section of the, the connection card in the back if you want me to answer uh, any of your questions in the next two weeks. We'll have two more weeks of this series. So here's the ground rules of the question and answer series. All right, you ready? Whenever the, the scripture speaks clearly about a subject, we'll answer your question from the scriptures. If the Bible doesn't speak specifically about the subject that you're asking about, then we'll try to draw biblical principles to use in answering those questions. We're not be able to, the Bible not speak specifically about your issue, but you could put two scriptures together and maybe balance and find a principle there. And if the scriptures don't speak about it, and we can't find a biblical principle about it, then you're just gonna get my opinion about what I think about the topic. And you can feel free to disagree with my opinion um, because everybody has an opinion, right? That's the one thing we all have in common. Everyone's got one, everyone has an opinion. And so you can disagree with mine if you'd like to. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> of course not. <no. laughs> <laughs> points, points to answer, questions to answer. Here's the first question uh, from people at the Foul Line Bar and Grill. We, uh, Uncle Cool actually wrote down like 10 questions at the bar from people like, uh, we, had a, we have this sandwich board in front of the bar that says, if God did exist, what would you ask him? And so Uncle Cool went through the whole bar saying, what would you ask God if you could? And, and so we got a whole bunch of unchurched people asking God questions. And I told them we have coasters at the foul line right now that say Summit Church, answering your toughest questions, right, with their questions and, and a little biblical answer on it. So people put their, their Coors Light down and there's a Bible verse. Yes. Uh, it's, kind of, it's crazy. We try evangelism all kinds of different ways at Summit Church. And you never know what's going to stick. You never know. So anyway, uh, some of these questions you can tell that they didn't come necessarily from a Sunday morning. So people from the foul line, Bubba H on Facebook and an anonymous connection card all on Sunday morning asked about animals. Do animals have spirits or do our pets go to heaven? Okay, so that's, that's an interesting question. How many of you would say, yes, I believe my pet will be with me in heaven. Fluffy will be there. Raise your hand if you Why think. Not? Okay, all right, now raise, if someone, if raise your hand if you don't think Fluffy's going to be there. Probably won't be there. Okay, so we all have different opinions about that, right? Can I tell you, the Bible doesn't say anything about that. We don't know if Fluffy's going to be in heaven. We have no idea. In fact, it's very hard for me to even grab a biblical principle on whether Fluffy will be there or not. We know that there are animals in heaven. We do know that when, when Christ comes back in the book of Revelation, it says that Christ is coming back. He's returning on a white horse. And we see all kinds of uh, descriptions of the throne room of God. There's beasts around the throne room of, of heaven. Some of these angels are kind of mixed versions of different animals. So we know that there are, kind of, there are beasts and animals in heaven, but we're not sure if Fluffy will be there. So uh, I'm trying to figure that one out. But it might be one of those unanswerable questions. That might be one of those ones that we can't find from the Bible. I'll give you my opinion about this, okay? Are you ready? Raise yourself. I think dogs will be in heaven. <laughs> Probably not cats. <laughs> have, you, have you met any cats? They're very aloof, very uncaring. I mean, there's nothing more satanic than a cat. <laughs> They're selfish. They'd rather scratch your eyes out than be pet by you. I mean, but a dog, they're friendly. They're almost godly in their nature. They're loyal. They'll go fetch for you. They'll serve. They have like a servant's attitude. I don't know. I have no idea. That's one of those things that you could just ask God later. I think when we get to heaven, oh, Fluffy's here. Great. But my opinion, my opinion probably is this. 
I think that that your dog probably won't go to heaven the exact dog that you have, but if you really, really love Doberman Pinchers your whole life, and God knows that you love Doberman Pinchers, you'll probably have a whole pound full of Doberman yeah. Pinchers at your mansion in heaven. <laughs> that might not be the exact, you know, crew that you had to hear down on earth, but you'll have what you love, probably. That's my guess. And um, because we know that animals don't have souls, they, they don't have an eternal soul, there's not an eternal quality to animals, but humans do. And so that's kind of my opinion. And you can, like I said, you can disagree with that all you want to, and I won't be offended. All right, second question. That was fun, right? Always love yes. talking about that. Question number two from the foul line about reincarnation and world religions. Get this question. It was an amazing one. It was actually the first question that I read that they gave me that night. It says this. Is Jesus, Gandhi, Buddha, and Muhammad all the same person? Thank you, evangelical answer over here. Yes, I agree. I agree. We know, we know, right? We do know that these four people are not the same people, just historically. From a purely secular standpoint, we know that these people lived at all different times in history, right? And they lived in different geography, different places in history. We also know where the grave of Gandhi is. We know where the grave of Buddha is. Uh, we're pretty sure that Muhammad has a grave. They're just not saying where it is. And, and we know that Jesus had a grave, but he came back to life. Over 500 people saw him post-resurrection. And so Jesus and Gandhi and Muhammad and Buddha are not the same people. But I don't, I don't really think this is a question so much uh, about that. I think it's a, more of a question about reincarnation. I think, I think what the person is really asking here is, does God reincarnate himself over and over again into great leaders and great teachers, and is it possible to be reincarnated over and over again? And I can tell you that's um, it's not really a biblical idea. Reincarnation uh, doesn't happen. I can tell you that these, those are not the same people. I want to just direct your attention to Hebrews chapter 9. I think it answers the, the question of reincarnation pretty well from the Bible. This is, this is what Christ uh, talks about Christ. It says, nor did he, Christ, enter heaven to offer himself again and again. The way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. In other words, Jesus didn't have to come and die again and die again and die again and live again and live again and die again. He, had to, he just did it. Question number seven. Salvation questions came from Stephanie on Facebook, from people at the Foul Line group, Bar and Grill, and then an several anonymous questions here from a connection card on Sunday morning. And I'm going to answer three quick ones of rapid fire. Why does God allow so many people to be lost? How do I know if I'm going to heaven? And if God forgives us, if we ask, why did Jesus have to die? <laughs> I'm going to this. Whoa, those are some tough questions, Pastor. Who, anybody want to stand up and just answer them? No? No takers? No one wants to come up? Okay, good. I guess I have the mic. All right. First, first question. Why so many lost? Why does it seem like God is allowing so many people to not know Christ and to be lost? I, I don't know the answer to all that. I, I wish I could say I have a perfect answer. I don't think I have a perfect answer, but I do have an answer. Matthew 7, verses 13 through 14, is what Jesus said. He said, why so many lost? Because the way is narrow. The way is narrow. In this passage in Matthew chapter 7, he says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. I don't know that that answers your question sufficiently, but I can tell you that Jesus is saying a lot of people don't take that path because it's a harder path. It's a better path, but it's harder. And most people don't want to take the harder path. Most people want to take the path of least resistance. Most people want to follow their flesh. Most people want to just do what everybody else is doing. Most people just kind of want to fit in with the culture. And as a Christian, I hate to tell you, but you kind of flown, you're kind of rolling upstream. You're kind of butting up against your culture. You're trying to go down a narrow path that nobody else wants to go. You're trying to go a, kind of a way that, that only a few ever go. Not, it's not that nobody goes that way, but there are only a few that really decide to go the narrow way. And it may not seem fair, but in some ways, we, we know that God is just. And people make their own choices, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> we make our own choices. Yeah. 
Well, we decide which path to take, don't we? In the end, when we answer to God, we're going to say, well, God, I didn't know about the narrow path. Well, no, you did. You just chose not to go that way. Man, that's hard. And I wish it wasn't that way. But because we are agents of free will and we have to make those decisions, we should choose the narrow way. We should be the elect, the elite, people who will do what most will not do, be committed radically to serving him and loving him and sharing his love with the lost and hurting world. Okay, second question in this grouping. How do I know if I'm going to heaven? <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. And I want to know for sure if I'm going to heaven. I love this one, 1 John 5, 13 through 15. It's often read in the Romans road as we share salvation with people. This is what it says. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. And you should take, maybe underline that in your notes, that you may know you have eternal life and are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Since he, we know that he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. How do we know? It says, I've written this to you that you believe in the name of the Son. How do you know? Do you believe in the name of the Son? Do you believe in Jesus? And you know. You know. You know him. You love him. You serve him. You want to glorify him. You don't know the Son? Then you don't know. Third, third question. This was a doozy, and I saved the best for last. If God forgives us when we ask, why did Jesus have to die? I mean, that's a good question. Like, God, you can do anything. You could just make your own little system. Why did Jesus have to die? And um, I would just say this, forget that forgiveness only comes because Jesus did die. Forgiveness only comes because Jesus did die. That, see, that's the difference. Hebrews 9.22 says this, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. This question to me is kind of like asking, if I can drive my kids to school anytime I want, why do I need a car? It's, it's, if I can drive my kids to school anytime I want, why do I need a car? And it's not a trick question. Why do I need a car? Because I can't drive them without a car. Right? <laughs> so Christ, in this example, Christ is the vehicle of atonement, of salvation. Without the shedding of his blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's the, the reason why forgiveness comes to begin with, is because he's paid the penalty. There, has, there is a price for our sin. There's a price we have to pay. Melody, I wonder if you come to play. I, I hope you understand that this whole sin thing with God is not a game. I think many times we, we look at sin and the misdeeds of our flesh and all that, we kind of look at it like, a, like a golf game. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we'll just fudge on the score a little bit, or I'll oh, just take another mulligan, you know? As if God's up there with this giant scorecard with your life, you know, 500 million good deeds, 650 billion bad deeds, oh man, I have to do another 100 billion, you know? <laughs> that, that God is not keeping score in that way. That our sin has to be paid for. And his blood, Jesus' blood, is the covering for the removal of the stain of our guilt. And that's how we know him. That's how we come to him. He's the vehicle of atonement. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12 says this. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth who you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone that you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. For whatever reason, the way God set it up is that there has to be 